Hey, how's it going, everybody? Today, we're going to be playing some Ryzen. This was actually a request from another viewer, so, you know, it's, it's a while back, but we're still going to play it. Because Ryzen's a pretty cool god. I think he's pretty good uh, right now, so we're going to, you know, get a good game with him. We're up against an Amaterasu, which uh, I think I've actually had this matchup before. I think Ryzen wins it. However, her silence can be super annoying because she can keep silencing my one, but we will see. Um, I kind of want to go Sands of Time or Vampiric. Let's go Vampiric into Bancrofts. Our goal is to get max cooldown late game, but we can do that with Chronos Pennant and all that good stuff. And now let's go Beads maybe or Ages. I guess Ages. Oh, I know you what rank. Uh, Diamond something. I don't really know what Diamond rank I am right now. I have a hard time paying attention to that. Since my rank is fluctuating so much so often. Like, I don't think Smite has ever had ranks be as sensitive as they are now. If I lose four games, I go to plat slash gold. If I win four games, I go to, like, diamond one. Gold one? Oh, rip. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's Smite matchmaking. Not much I can do about that. It's out of my control. If I could control it to put me against somebody at my own skill level every single game, I would, but it doesn't do that. Just going to be taking all the buffs here. Looks like she's got mannequins, so I should try to stay away from her. Just going to do too much damage. Yeah, Ryshin's just got really good clear. His passive's really good for just spamming abilities. Every fourth ability, or I guess fifth ability, his cooldowns get lowered. Does he do anything else? His base attacks are also have a wider uh, hitbox, I guess. Yeah. I wonder if Bumba's Ryshin would work with his passive. You just keep using abilities, and then every fifth ability, your abilities would go two-second cooldowns. But auto take answers on him would be, like, awful. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be that bad. That'd be a weird video. Might be fun, though. In the future. I know with Bumba Sylvanas. Bumba Sylvanas, it's like... It can work, but it's so, but you're like, you lower the chances of you winning the game by not going mannequins so much on Sylvanas. Like, basically, if you get Bumpus Hammer online with Sylvanas, you were going to win the game anyways with mannequins. That's how I see it anyways. In the games I've tried to go it. So crazy. It's been almost, uh, you know, we're, we're at the end of season, what is it right now? Season eight? Damn, dude. I've been playing this game since 2012. Nine years. And now it's, uh, end of season eight. I started in open beta. My account was created Christmas 2012. That's a little too much smite. You going Transcendence? I guess that'll give you a lot of power. Oh, Tyra's still targeting me. Malt actually does a huge amount of damage. Might be able to kill her here. If she gives me the opportunity. Oh, I was thinking about Aegising that. Alright, she's back. You know, you need to use my potions. Just gonna clear the wave. Yeah, I was tempted to ult, but it was like, nah, she's a little too far with... Well, not far, but just her HP wasn't quite low enough. Because I only have one point in my ultimate. We're kind of doubling down on life still here. So once she gets anti-heal, that's going to be annoying. Oh, I, I wanted to mention. I started playing uh, Teamfight Tactics. I don't know if you guys know that game. But it's actually really fun. It's actually pretty cool. 
I really liked uh, Prophecy when Prophecy came out. And I don't, if you guys don't know what Prophecy is, Prophecy was a smite, a smite themed game that was an auto battler. So it was like Team Fight Tactics, but with smite gods. And it was so fun. It was so awesome. It wasn't actually made by Hi Res. Instead, it was licensed by Hi Res to another company for the smite assets and stuff and then they made prophecy but i guess it wasn't doing too well because they shut it down after like a month and it's like dude if you're gonna only keep if you're gonna make a full-fledged game because it was a full-fledged game at that point and you're only gonna leave it up for a month to see how it's doing what it's like so many people love prophecy i actually i regret not making youtube content of it because it was just so hype uh, and then even like at that point a lot of people that wanted to play prophecy couldn't even play it because it was invite only <laughs> So like I don't get it like if people weren't playing it, why not just send out more keys, right? It's just so weird to me But yeah, I'm, I miss prophecy every day and teamfight tactics has filled that hole in my heart ever so slightly However, there is hopes of prophecy coming back because I follow them on Twitter and like out of the blue they were randomly like hey we're hiring and i'm like oh you guys still working on prophecy and i i believe they mentioned that they want to bring back prophecy just with they're, they're going to be changing mechanics they're going to be changing some main mechanics of the game which is cool but that's something i'm looking forward to i'm also enjoying the inscription series but yeah, the more I think about it, it's like if Hyrez ever does another game like that, because let's see, we've had we've had Hand of the Gods. If you guys don't know, Hand of the Gods was a deck building game um, that was smite themed. We've had Prophecy. I don't think we've had any other ones. We had Smite Blitz, which was a mobile game, but I don't really count that because it's not really the same themes. Like all the gods were different. Uh there was a mobile game that for Smite that was announced that looked really fun, but they never actually completed it. And that was like five years ago. But but the point is, they've done a couple at this point of Smite-themed games that are like, you know, completely different genres or whatever. And if they do that, I, I think they should do it the League of Legends way, man. Just put it in the in Smite. Like, basically, to play Team Fight Tactics, you download League of Legends... And then you literally just boot up Teamfight Tactics and then boom, they're, they're there. And you know, it still has skins and stuff that are unique to Teamfight Tactics, so they're still making money or whatever. Um, but yeah, if, if Smite does that, they should have it in the Smite launcher. Because I think that prevents the biggest problem, which is trying to get players into it. Plus, I think it's good for Smite too. Like, look at it this way. I don't play League of Legends anymore. I, I quit a long time ago. But now that I have Team Fight Tactics downloaded, I'm literally just one step away from playing League of Legends again. All it would take is like some people would be like, "Hey, you, you want to play League?" And then I'm like, "Well, I guess I already have it downloaded, huh?" And the same could go for Smite. People would be like, "Hey, want to play? You know, play Prophecy?" And they get Prophecy. They get really into Prophecy, and then they're like, "You know what? Let's try out Smite. Let's try out the main game." I don't know. I just think it would be good for Smite if it was in the launcher. Now, the problem with that is the file size. I know Smite tries to keep their file sizes small because uh, a lot of people play on toasters. And that, you know, obviously affecting file size is not great. But they will be saving some file size once uh, Siege and Clash gets replaced with Slash. Oh, you used your escape. I'm diving for this. I don't care. I don't care. But yeah, that, that would be hype. Now, actually, when you compare Smite's file sizes to, like, big games nowadays, uh, I think Smite is really small. I mean, it still uses quite a bit of memory, but nowadays, a lot of games that come out are using way more memory than Smite. Like, way, way more. Yeah, I might skip defense, just because this is kind of uh, unfair. We'll go no defense. We'll just go full mage. 
Um, let's go. What's a good item here? I guess just save our relic. Because man, high risk keeps making games that are cool and then something happens and then they go down. It's like, bro, your track record is not great. <laughs> it used to be Smite was their golden child, right? And Smite was the only, like, <laughs> I don't want to say successful game, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> but now they've got Realm Roy or I guess not, I said the wrong game. Realm Royale is not doing too good as far as I know. Uh, that's funny. Um, they've got Smite. They've got... Rogue Company, they've got Paladins. I think those games are doing good. I think Rogue Company is doing really good. I don't know about Paladins. Paladins, every now and then, it seems like they're doing really good, then bad, then good, then bad. I don't know. But, I mean, those are three pretty solid games that they've got right now. I really like the decision when they split the company up into different mini companies for each game. Because that meant like Titan Forge is specifically only Smite, and that's good. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, sorry about going on that huge tangent. I was just, I was just like, I don't know. Think about prophecy, man. I do hope they bring it back. I think I went on that tangent because I don't, I don't know if there's too much more to this game currently. It's mostly just farming, man. That's what Duel is. Farming Simulator 2021. I think that's what we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be doing for now just tangents um like around this time of year is always the time people are taking breaks from smite because this is when the meta stays the same because you know they can't shift it up for worlds uh, the world championship so they want to keep it kind of the same right but uh and then also with the new season around the corner everybody kind of wants to sit it out until that happens so i think this is always when smite has the least amount of players but uh you know it's still doing good but once that new season drops it's always like world breaking uh smite numbers i wonder what they'll do this year well last year they did starter items maybe they'll do relics man i don't know imagine they bring back the old relic system from season two but they improve it Honestly, that relic system was kind of OP, though. <laughs> Basically, each upgrade costed 300 gold, even your first upgrade. But you could upgrade three times. So you could have, like, a 45-second blink cooldown. <laughs> That's still insane to think about. That's, uh, with... <laughs> imagine that with Relic Dagger. Oh, my God. You would have blink every 15 seconds. Oh, they gotta bring it back now. Oh, let's go Book Thoth, because why not? Then I'll go Paul and Alcon. And then we'll be hidden hard. What do you guys think is going to happen to in Season 9? You let me know. I'm interested. Usually when stuff is data mined nowadays, I just like to wait until it's like fully announced. But if it's theories, and it's just theories, I, like, I love to hear them. I'm always excited for new items. New items are so important for the game. Like right now in Duel, we suffer from a magical penetration item. Like item build wise, I, I don't know how to describe it. Oh, hold on. Don't want to die. Oh my god, I aim to the right for every single shot. 
But what I mean by that is right now for when you're going to get up against like triple defense, you've got Obsidian Shard, Karen's Coin, and Demonic Grip. If you're not an auto attack character, Demonic Grip is out of the question. Karen's Coin is, you're never going to get the stacks for it. So the stats are actually pretty bad outside of the 20% pen. So then you're left with Obsidian Shard, which right now nobody likes Obsidian Shard. Uh, they are going to be buffing it, which is cool. But if they add more, you know, penetration variety, it doesn't necessarily make it more OP because it caps at 40% penetration anyways, right? But by giving more variety, it gives allows different types of characters to actually get that penetration, right? So if you're not an auto attack character, but maybe you're like Raijin, right? Uh, Spirit of Magus is good for you, but it's not good against those huge tanks. So I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking about stuff like that. I'm, I'm excited for the next season. Um, I've, I've still been burned out on streaming Smite, but I mean, I still love doing Smite for YouTube. I don't know why, but when it's for YouTube, it's more of a, like a controlled environment, I guess. It's funny because that always switches. There's periods where it was like all my games on the stream were awesome and then all the ones for YouTube were bad. And then the opposite where it's kind of like now where the games for YouTube are good, where they're chill, but then the games for stream are not. Oh, let's set up a trap. It's a trap. I'll attack. I got you. If I can block her three. Oh, no, I messed up. Is your escape down? She's staying. Maybe she's not. I don't know. Okay, there we go. We have a full minion wave. This is really good. Try to keep her from clearing the wave too much. Cancel. Use our ultimate. Look at that damage. I get 679 power at low health with that build. Because of my Bancroft stipends. That's insane. And I still have room for one bar item. And I can still upgrade my Vampiric Shroud. But yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that full gameplay. I know it was a little different, whereas I was less focusing on the game and more just talked about the future of Smite and stuff like that. But uh, if you guys enjoyed, please let me know. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Let me know what other guys you want me to play. Bye, buddy.